2025 is going to be a wild year for design and AI. And I got some web design trends I want to show you that I believe are going to be in 2025. The first one is interactive 3D, you know, with all the technology that's growing in the AR space and with the web being so much more fast with animations and optimization and 3D things, I think it's really cool. This first site is igloo.inc, has a beautiful 3D animation. It looks like it's, I mean, some Unreal Engine game or something, but it looks really cool. Um, looks like it's a community, but as you move your mouse, you see it's got this cool hover effect. And if you put your mouse on the igloo, it starts opening pieces of the ice bricks, which is so cool. And then you can scroll and it will zoom out and fade. So there's a lot of like crazy effects happening, which is awesome. Look at this. You put your mouse over it. It's got like this highlight effect. And then it's got some like penguin inside the ice, but a lot of interactivity, 3D text, hover effects, bit of everything, but like it's just super high quality and then you can change this to go to their different socials i think it's and it goes back to the beginning that's that's awesome so it does like a loop amazing concept love this 3d example next we got uh this one chris.ai another 3d example so you can see hi i'm chris an ai chatbot for dentists and then you scroll through, got a bit of animation, got some clouds. I scroll down and then it takes you to this 3D um, sort of a, a floating and moving. And you put your mouse over these sections here and you got these little buttons and you can click in and it will show you some more details. So it's got 3D, it's got hover interactions, uh, lots of detail in these 3D environments. And then we can click here and then you've got the sidebar that I can scroll through to get like more data and information on like the app and what it does. So I think this is, yeah, super cool. And then I think that's how you can reset it. So it's basically like a 3D infographic and then each part of this, each section is a different part um, of the site. So I think that's really cool. Another one is Monolith Studio. Now this one, as you scroll through, you got sort of this, you know, parallax effect in the back there. I would scroll through, you got this 3D guy going. 3D stone, Greek style, and then goes into the website and you've got, you know, the team and it's basically a tattoo, tattoo website. But this first section is really cool. It's got, you know, the text as it floats through, but I really like how this spins and it scales and it just makes it more fun when I'm scrolling through the site. It's, it's, it's more, it's not boring. Now the second trend is complex hover interaction. So another cool example is from Adidas or, or uh, Adidas. <laughs> if you're in America, that's how you say it. But us Aussies call it Adidas <laughs> for some reason. I just think this is super simple, but it's really cool. You move your mouse and it just rotates and it highlights when you put your mouse over the suits. And I think with like wearable technology and brands collaborating, you can just do a lot of cool 3D environments and AI makes it a bit easier as well, faster. Scroll through, you've got this spinning effect. And then you've got text coming in, lots of motion, bold typography. The, really, the red color stands out as well. And then this split thing, this is really cool, like that you don't normally have that. So it's a combination, combining all different elements to get a, an experience. It's all about that interactive 3D, uh, make it feel real, make it feel interesting. Another AI one here, it's a banking app. Now it's got a sideway hover, hover scroll as you scroll through. And it has like this nice mock-up and then you can move your mouse and it's got a little bit of a hover effect. They probably made this in spline or something. And then you can click on the box and then it will slide in and do like a transition. And then we'll go back. So really loving this hover scroll. It makes it more of a story as you go through slowly. It paces out that website instead of just rushing through it. Yeah, and I love the colors as well. You can see the gradients, the airiness. We can go back and forth. So I think this is super awesome. This one I found is all well, superpower. New era of personal health. So it kicks you off, you scroll through it, and it goes through this, this person's eye, <laughs> eyeball. <laughs> then you go through some tunnel, and then it takes you to the, it shows you the dashboard. So it's another interesting way, instead of just showing the product, it's making you go through, you know, the eye, the vision, uh, going into the bottle, like traveling into the body. So you, you have that storytelling element, which every designer should have, um, instead of just creating, doing product shots, it's another interesting way to interact. Then you got some hover interactions here, as you can see, as I go through the steps. And then we got some more uh, mouse cursor interactions here. I like this sort of 3D skewed effect. It looks really cool. 
then you got some more hover effects. So you put your mouse, then then text. You're getting some these little text details explaining, you know, the card. What what's it about? The image. Scroll through, and then you got this stretch effect. And then it goes down, and then you got the footer there. So this is another great way of hover effects. The next trend is minimal tech forward style. So I saw anything LLM recently where you can create your own AI agent on your or desktop or your Mac. And I really like this style. It's just got a dark background, a clean sans serif font, and it's not trying to do too much. It's just keeping it simple, simple, you know, grids here, but like one main column, you know, just scroll through nothing fancy, no fancy interactions or anything. But I just like how it's really clean and simple. I like the colors as well, like this sort of pastel -y neon colors. And I like the grays and the whites. Just, you have a lot of contrast. Another good example is Bot Press as well. It looks similar to anything LLM. Sans Serif, you got like these grid lines. I'm always a fan of the grids. But because we've seen a lot of like the dark modes and the gradient glows and a lot of the gradient stuff, I think people are pulling back on that and making it more clean, minimal. Just focusing on the tech, you still got bento boxes here. As you can see, some nice little hover effects. You get that sort of highlight in the corners. Good contrast, um, but just a bit more simple. Here's another example, Savela or Savala. Uh, deploy anything, forget complexity. So this is another AI process app. This one has a different color, orange and like a dark, very dark, dark blue, black color. And we've got this one, hex.tech. Bring everything together with data, end to end quick queries this one has a bit of a grain so if you don't want it to be too simplistic then you can add some grain in the background We've got some patterns movement in the back as you can see here but this palette this color palette looks works really well and then adding some illustrative elements illustrations just make it stand out so simple turn down websites illustrative elements using simple columns and grids. And then here is another one, um, control, it's a crypto wallet. Look, this one's more of a white space minimal. Scroll through. It's talking about like the gas fees and the product. Got this scroll effect, that's really cool. And it's got the bold typography and a bit of bright bold colors. And this one has just more minimal hover effects. Well, and except for the footer, that's cool. You put your mouse, love that. That's a bit of fun. I like how they didn't put this at the front because it'll just be distracting. But at the footer, when you're sort of probably going to get off the site, it's a bit of uh, makes you stay a little bit longer. Next trend I've noticing is bold typography and creative text layouts. So breaking the generic grids. This one page dash grid.com is good. I like how big bold typography sort of got. You know, these cars is blocked in the, in the, the right, more modular, but it's, um, yeah, uncommon. So the left space, usually you have like the main header and everything, but this one's doing a bit different. Scroll through, different sizes, got a bit of motion in there, different sections, and you got the bento box, clean, simple icons. So the layouts, all, it keeps changing. It's all a bit of different, like mixing it up, make it interesting. These ones are really interesting as well. So you've got like a bold, header but then you've got like this big bold text at the bottom and you put your mouse over it and then it's got these fun little animations here on the for each letter and as you scroll through you get like zoom ins and different sections come they come in now just like how it's really smooth and then it changes it up this section here with some effects so really breaking away from the traditional boring layouts and making it a bit fun, a bit different. Next trend is fun nostalgia retro. So because people, you know, you get a lot of the corporate tech tactile feel, but a lot of people want to go opposite. So they'll go like retro or they do Y2K style or maximalist. It depends, it changes all the time. But this one I think is really cool. This one is a inflatable alphabet. It's a, yeah, I think, I don't know if it's free. I think it's a, you got to pay for it, but I really love this, this, this floating 3D objects, like this balloon style. And I like the colors, it's fun. Got some fun little interactions with the shape in the, the back, that yellow spiral thing. Try now, okay, it is a paid product, but I just like this cool 
style. Another nice one is flowfest.co. This is for a Webflow event that happened earlier this year. This is a solid, this text is very unique. I love this flow. And then I like the sunburst effect and the bright colors. Retro colors are always very vibrant and fun. So you can see them using that there and using funky shapes. So that's a good one. And another one, Nolo, vibrant. You've got these drop shadow effects, bold thick outlines when you think of retro. So the retro is always going to be fun and playful, colorful. And I like seeing it. I probably wouldn't do too many retro sites. I'm more of a tech, you know, like the dark mode and stuff. But this is fun if you're doing like an event or if you're doing like community or just um, launching something different. I think it's really cool. Here's another quick example, New Valley Labs. Got these flowers here, which is cool. We mouse over it and you go, it goes to different pages. And it will take you to the, the portfolio there. And I love this like just 70s vibe right here. I like this bold font. Looks dope. And then a few other examples. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's trends, but just cool things. I like seeing products like this. A lot of when it's like you're selling a main product, like an aura ring or a wearable or, you know, something for the kitchen. I don't know, like coffee machine or something. You get these really nice product effects where it's just a scroll through. And you got many layers, but you got a mix of 3D, text, motion, you got sliders. Love this uh, color palette here. And then breaking down the product, you put your mouse over, it's got these infographics. Works really well for a specific product you're trying to sell. You want to communicate, you know, all the features, all the benefits. I think that's really cool. Another cool one someone made this year, um, they made a Dita Rams inspired uh, framer components. So I don't know if you know Dita Rams, he's one of the He's the inventor of Braun products, and he did a lot of other, other things as well. But um, someone created this inspired by him. He's always about, you know, design should be simple and invisible. And there's you should read the principles, the Didram's principles. I think it's just like good advice in general if you're a designer. So someone made these free components. I think this is cool. So you can use it in Framer. So yeah, those are some upcoming trends for 2025. But as I always say, like, you know, focus on adding value to your client. Don't just focus on trends because trends can come and go and focus on the task, you know, focus on the results. What is the result? What is the target audience? What's the goal? You know, because each project is a bit different. So, but it's good to add some trends, especially when it comes to, you know, more sites are adding motion. Just don't overdo it because it can distract from the actual value and the product. So add hover effects, add motion. It's so much easier now with so many different plugins and everything. So, but overall, I'll say thanks to Framer for sponsoring this video. I am actually a partner with Framer. And if you do want to get 25% off any site plan, use my code Jeremy at the checkout and you can get a discount. And yeah, I use Framer for my personal websites, landing pages, client websites, and I've really been loving it. And if you want to give it a try, Go for it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see some other design trends and tips, then you can check out this video right here.